I couldn't agree more with the president's decision. Look, uh, by definition, this is the opposite of an Obama decision. Obama got us involved. Trump's taken us out. Congress has never declared war or authorized the use of military force in Syria. We shouldn't be there anyway without Congress doing that. Senator Mike Lee backing President uh, Trump's decision to start removing troops out of Syria. My next guest is in agreement on that. Senator Rand Paul, Republican out of Kentucky, member of the Foreign Relations Committee. Welcome back here. Uh, a lot of your colleagues right. disagree. Why do you support the beginning of this move in Syria? Right. Well, this is a very bold move for President Trump. It's exactly what he promised the American people. In fact, it's one of the reasons he won the election, that is that he's different than so many Republicans that want to be everywhere, all the time, around the world, that they want us to be the world's policemen, that every war on the planet we've got to have our soldiers involved with. President Trump said he was going to treat America first. And so I think bringing some of that money home, whether it goes towards border security, whether it goes towards building bridges and roads in our country. See, I think there are a lot of independent voters and a lot of people in the middle in these states that President Trump won, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. These are states that no other Republican won because they want to be at war everywhere all the time. President Trump said, we're going to fight when we have to, but when we win, we're going to come home. It's an incredibly bold maneuver. All of the naysayers in Washington will be against him. But guess what? If you ask the American people, this is why President Trump won the election. Okay, I have a few pointed questions for you on that then. Do you believe this is a veiled way of getting more border security? You save money in Syria and you put it toward the border in the southwest? I don't think that's the intention. I think that we have won the war against ISIS. We've taken back 99% of the land. The upper hand is now with the people who live there. And ultimately, self-determination is about the people who live there standing up and fighting. We've spent trillions of dollars over there. For goodness sakes, should the Iraqis now stand up and defend their territory? Should the Kurds stand up and defend their territory? Absolutely. But we should not always have to fight everyone else's battle and pay for it. But can any of this money be shifted to a wall? Is that the purpose? I don't think that's the purpose, but I've advised the president for some time now that we're spending $50 billion a year in Afghanistan, and we should declare victory, come home from Afghanistan, and that money would be and could be used for the wall. I think a lot of people in Bowling Green, Kentucky, your hometown, would agree with you on that. However, you, you've got bigger players in Iraq. You, you, you've got Iran and you've got Russia. That, th this is a stew that's happening in Syria. And to, to yep. leave the possibility of a power vacuum puts a lot at risk here. Saudi Arabia, this is, the progress in Iraq, our, our, our right. friend and neighbor Israel as well, Senator. But this was the decision we should have made five years ago when we started supporting jihadists. Hillary Clinton was a big supporter of uh, the radical Islamists, the, the people, you know, for violent jihad in Syria. They were no better than Assad. But Hillary Clinton and Obama got us involved in that Syrian war. And at the time, Republicans were actually more unified and saying, hey, wait a minute. They were saying, like Senator Lee is saying, we didn't vote for war in Syria. So Syria is a mess, but we didn't create that mess. What you really need now, and if you talk to the generals, not one of them will say there's a military solution over there. We need to get together with Russia, with Iraq, with Iran, with Turkey, with all of the players, with Syria, and we need to have a, a peace negotiated now because no one's going to completely win that war. That's a tough neighborhood. Here's the tweet from the president, one of many, uh, on Syria. Does the USA want to be a policeman of the Middle East, getting nothing but spending precious lives and trillions of dollars protecting others who, in almost all cases, do not appreciate what we are doing? Do we want to be there forever? Time for others to finally fight. I mentioned the vacuum. Let me move on to the opposition. Senators yesterday, apparently they gave Mike Pence an earful behind closed doors. Here's part of their statement. Any sign of weakness perceived by Iran or Russia will only result in the increased presence in the region and a decrease in our trust of our partners and our allies. Valid points there, Senator. Well, what happened is our original goal was to defeat ISIS, and we did. ISIS is defeated. 99% of their land is gone. And I think the people who live there need to stand up now and keep ISIS from reorganizing. But it should not always be the job of the American taxpayer. Look, we have people struggling in our country, struggling to make a living, struggling on bad roads and bad schools. Let's take care of America first. And let's not say that we have to rebuild every other country and that we have to send our soldiers into harm's way in every other country and that we're never coming home. I think it's interesting. You had a soldier on earlier this morning on the Fox and Friends who uh, said it exactly right. He served over there and he said, look, we can't stay forever and we shouldn't stay forever. And when we risk our young lives, there's no reason why we have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. The people who live there need to stand up and defend their countries. We can help 
But you know what? We should obey the Constitution and vote on it when we go to war, and we should come home so, when we win. More to come on this quickly.